Bum, bum, bum. Hello everyone. Hello. So I'm just going to say I'm on early just to get people in and on and talking. Hello Elizabeth. How are you? How's your day gone? Hi Shira. Hi Linda, how are you? So I am on early a minute, but that's so that I can show you everything before we get going with the with the demo basically. Uh, so it's not much of a, a card making thing, it's just showing you techniques on this machine. Ah lovely. Glad you're okay, Elizabeth. So if you're on and you want me to say hello to you, just type hello in the message and send me hello and I can say hello back. Hi Tracy. Ah, you're from Amesbury. Lovely. My mother-in-law, who's Carol Woolmer, is actually just between there and Salisbury. I think. Yeah. Hello, Sarah. So, I don't know what the time is. Let's have a look. Let's see what time it is. So, we've still got three minutes before two o'clock. So we'll just say hello to everybody and, and stuff like that and now I can explain what we're going to do. Hi Judith. Ah right, Craft Crazy. How's things Tracy, okay? I've had fun with this machine. I've had real, real fun with it. Um, I've got a few things to show you today as well. Um, show you the extras that you can buy separately and I'll explain the differences between this foiling machine and another foiling machine as well. I have actually bought some stamps for you before Tracy. Um, we, I think we came into your shop when we was visiting and um, I think it was some old, um, I think it was vintage ladies and I had a full set of them from you. Yes, it's a very nice machine, Sheila. Very, very nice. So what's the time? Is it two o'clock? Shall we get to go in? So don't forget if you need me, want me to say hello to you, then please type hello. So I know you're there. Oh, there we are. So we're, we're not far off two now. So, so first things first, let's talk about what comes with the machine. <laughs> don't blame you, Tracy. Um, yeah, it works a little bit differently to some of the other foil machines, uh, but it does use a toner. It is a toner one, so you know, can use it with your, you can also use it with your um, photocopies from a laser machine as well. Hi Kate, how are you? So first of all, 
what comes in the box. So it's a nice little box, nice little decorations on there. Uh, but what comes with the box is this. I shall show you that. So you get the machine, you get the handle and a little Allen key to fix the handle on and a little bun to hide the little mark, the little circle there. And you also get uh, an English three prong plug, a UK plug. And the first thing I'm going to do while we're going to talk about everything that's in there is I'm going to turn the little machine on. So it's got a little red switch on the side here. So that's all I'm going to do. It's knock that on, it beeps and the light comes on. So that needs time to heat up. So that's one thing. Okay, so we leave that on and it will beep later on as well. So the next thing you get is a little metal scribe thing and this is magnetic to the whiteboard okay so it holds there to hold your foil on it's not it's very very flimsy it bends it's it's like one of those little fish that you used to put on your hands that's how sort of thin it is you get a magnetic white base so that is magnetic okay and just to show that it's magnetic I'll stick my scissors on it. There you go, so that's holding it. Okay. You also get a five millimeter clear plate. You get two three millimeter clear plates. And what we suggest is that you keep one for your die cut in. So I don't know if you can see on that one. It's actually being cut a square on that, so always use that for cutting into. Yeah, I think you could just see the white line there where the light is catching it. And keep one for just your foiling, okay, if, for when you're foiling. But to be honest with you, I tend to put it underneath anyway. So always keep that there, and also all the clear plates are available, are available because they do spare ones of these as well. So if you do get them too damaged, you can buy more, okay? So that's all the plates. You also get um, a sheet that tells you the order for die cutting, embossing, your embossing folders, and for the hot foiling, okay? And then it's got a few general solving problems there. So, so that's that, and it's got all the warnings and stuff like that, and all the power things. You also get a roll of foil okay so that's a roll of foil and this is a toner foil so I'll explain that as well and you also get a toner pen okay so this is a transfer ink pen so on this one you can see that it, the nib is actually black and that's because I've already loaded it up and you can see that even through the case there but when you get it it will actually be a completely white tip and a good suggestion when you open it push the tip down once quickly and lift it up onto a piece of scrap card and just leave it for 30 seconds with the tip pointing down so that the capillary action of the tip can actually start drawing that ink through okay and then when if it doesn't come all the way through and it doesn't write properly then just push it down once more but don't hold it down just pump it once and then just leave that okay until you writes properly right so that is that so the machine is now heating up it probably was the machine Rihanna was talking about it because it's a lovely machine. So I'm going to show you a few little samples I've already done, but I'm also then going to wait for this to go beep while you were doing that. Okay. So one of the things I used with the pen is I actually wrote Kaleido Live Demo. 
and this is on just a, a porous card. Okay, so that's Kaleido Light Den when I put a heart coming from the wood in, and you can see the nice foil in there. Okay, and then what I done, I took the piece of foil, so when I put it through the machine, it left the foil with the right in in it. So you can see that's right in it. So then what I done, I took that white, that bit of foil, put it onto a piece of card, which I will show you later, and I put that through the machine, and then I had the reverse way of what the foil did. Okay. So that is showing you that there, so you can see the writing on there, lovely. Okay, and that's quite nice. It takes on the texture of the card as well, if it's a texture card instead of a super smooth, just so you know that. So that's that. I've also, uh, Gavin had a play with it as well, and he stamped some big stamps on it. Okay, does miss a few little areas, but that could be because maybe the ink wasn't quite dry or it wasn't enough ink on the card, first of all, because you'd need to wait for it to absorb into the card. So that was like a pink one, and that was a green-ish foil, okay. So that's that. And then Ah uh, right. Right. Sorry. So what it was, Gavin tried these stamps through, the laminator. through a laminator, but it didn't quite work well enough with a stamp. But I have actually done ones last night with some butterflies and I've done that on a super smooth so I've used the pink which you can see you can see the image through that and then I actually got the pink foil on there so that is using um, another product that can be bought separately and I'll explain that to you in a minute as well Okay, so you can stamp with this and foil. You can uh, foil straight sheets and then die cut that and we'll go into all that now in a minute. But to show you some things that I have done, I have foiled onto parchment paper or vellum, whichever you want to call it. I tried it on some mirror card. And that is the machine telling me it's up to temperature now. So that's why it beeps three times. So I've done a red foil on a silver Miri card. Okay. I've done that was green on a pole on a you know, super smooth. And that's using the stamp and the pen. Also done a piece of pearlescent, but if I show you this. I think I went too slow through the machine and it's just picked up a little sort of bits of blue around the edge of the of it. So you can see it's quite a bit of messy there. So that's the only one it actually happened to with me on there. But then I've done a matte mirror board and I've used a glittery foil and that's done that. So that was quite nice. And then I also put it an embossing folder through and foil that. And I also used um, a stencil, but I'm going to show you a different technique with a stencil as well today. Okay. So without further ado, let's, because this is now up to temperature, so it's not hot around the machine, on the base is there, but don't put your hand through the hole with the plates will go. And also, when you've got the heater on, and it does take a while to, to cool down when you turn it off, never leave your plates under there. Even if it's just a little bit under there, don't leave them under there, because if the roller is touching, it will start to melt into the plastic a bit. And so that's one thing to remember. And how do I know that? Because I've got a little dip on mine now. 
right? And that's the reason why. So never do that. So today, the first thing I'm going to do is show you the pen that comes with it and the foil that comes with it. You may get a different colour, but so far I think everybody's at gold. Okay. So the sandwich for foiling is... I'll, I'll tell you the way it is in the book. So sandwich for foiling is the five millimeter five millimeter plate at the bottom, which is the way I like to use it as well. Then you've got a three millimeter plate, so it doesn't matter which one you use because you're not die cutting it to it. So I'll just put that one there, and then you use your white thick magnetic. So it's the five mil, the three mil clears, and then the white one. Okay. That's it. Right. Okay. So then we take the pen. And I'll put that to the side. So what I'll do, I'll do a little design on a piece of 300 gram, and this is super smooth. 200 gram super smooth yeah I think we've got two left in stock I think of the machines I know Gavin did check to see if they had any in stock in the warehouse with the suppliers and I don't think they've got them at the moment so this is a 300 gram super smooth 200 gram super smooth piece of parchment and this is one of um, sentimentally yours uh, backing papers and I'm going to show a different technique with a paintbrush later on that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my pen and that's all I'll do is I'll write some names. So let's do, so what I'm doing, I'm taking it nice and slow. I'll do S A R A H. I'll just do some sort of wiggle across it. And some dots. Okay. So that's on the 300. And then on this one, I'll pick another name. I'll do L Y N D A. fill in a little space there with a the heart okay and then on the parchment I'm going to put so I'm not going too slow but I'm making sure that enough of the ink is flowing and if the ink's not flowing enough just pump it once more again okay so I'm just writing there and then I'm going to just do a few little squiggles designs there we go okay so I'll just do that on that one and then just to show you so this will all work through different it's just to show that you can do different things and use different stocks. Okay, so I'm just going to do a corner there. And now on this one, I'm just going to do some stitching, some faux stitching and dots. And I'm just going to do a nice heart there. Okay, so I've just done a few little designs now. On some different substrates, so different materials with the same pen. Okay, 
So let's bring in those plates again. Uh, five mil, three mil, magnetic. Okay. So this is the first one I done, and literally, you can by looking in the light, you can see whether it's actually. You can see if it's shiny. If it's shiny, it means it's not dry. But that is dry. So now I know that's dry. I can pop that there. Bring these to the side. So I've got my sailor piece there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut this oil. Comes with a little tabs just to hold it. So, so this is quite a large piece for what I'm doing there. So, it just shows you don't have to use big pieces. Okay. So I've got a sailor there. So I'm just bringing the foil more towards the top, so it's just covering the bottom. And I'm going to take the thin metal strip which I, like I said is bendy, but because it's metal, it'll actually go across the top of your foil piece, like that, okay? And then when you place it into your machine, just make sure all the plates are straight, and then when you're ready, you just go through, one, two, three, and then that's gone there, okay? Your metal thing might move down as you're doing it, but that is your foil there, okay? Um, I just take that off slowly, and that is your Sarah in gold, okay? So that's lovely, okay? So I'm going to put that on the same sheet there and I'm going to show you what to do with that later okay so that was 300 grams super smooth let's have a look if it's dry on the parchment it is so it's dry on the parchment as well and when I put all this out of the back I actually pulled it so it was away from underneath there just so it wouldn't actually mark it so I'm going to put my piece of parchment and take the same foil and put it to the top. And I'm going to put that on the end. Okay, and then pop that in. And then when I take that through, and I'm not going too slowly, but what I do, just take your plates out. Now we take that off. That is actually parchment foiled as well. So you could do your sentiments. You could even put um, your parchment over one of your groovy plates or a parchment pattern. Go over with your with your pen and actually do that as well. Okay. So you can actually do parchment. So I will leave that there and show you something else with that after as well put that back and then just to show you the Linda piece I did as well we'll just take that same amount of foil so the little strip I'm literally put in sort of on the edge of the foiling of the foil sheet okay so I'm putting on the edge of the foil sheet just to stop that foil lifting up when I put it through the machine. Okay, because we don't want that to go through your rollers. Okay, and I just go through. Bring it out. So just remember, always take your plates out. Or make sure they're not underneath there. There we are. So that's the, that's the Linda done there. Okay. 
so this really really does heat up as well so it's not just a warm plate it is a hot roller and it's the top roller that actually it gets heated the bottom roller doesn't so I can touch the bottom roller it's cold but if I touch that top roller I could hurt myself because it is quite hot so that's the one thing to can you use acetate if it's heat resistant acetate yes um, I'm not sure if I've got any acetate here but yes you can use heat resistant acetate um, because the pen will work on uh, mirror boards foils and all sorts of other things it will work okay so this pen will work on mirror board pearlescent acetate but make sure it is a heat resistant acetate because obviously it's going to touch that heat so that's a good question that is um, so I did this one on some paper and what I'm going to do because it's quite a a long piece I'm actually going to just cut that that way I'm going to cut a piece of foil and I'll show you all the other colour foils that are available as well at the moment. So I'm going to pop that on there, I'm going to put that over there. So I'm making sure the foil is further up than my piece of card. I'm just putting that on the edge of the foil again. Okay. So I'm going to pop that through as well. So this is on a piece of Phil Martin. Uh, sentimentally yours backing paper from one of his pads okay and I do like to leave it cool down just a little bit before I take that off but that you can see is foiled everywhere that's left a little bit of residue around the edges uh, but sometimes if it's just fixed you can rub the you can erase that out but I quite like that on the paper because it gives it an extra sort of touch to the card okay so that is how you use the pen okay and that is how you use that now if I wanted to um, foil a piece of card and then die cut out of it there is another product that comes with this um, well it doesn't come in the pack but it is an extra add-on that you can buy and we do have some in the shop i think i'm not sure um, i'm just going to take a piece of 300 gram okay and i'll just get a piece oh i should be okay here. So I've got this piece of 300 gram piece of card and this is just an A6 piece. Okay, and the other stuff that they do is a cross to Kaleido Magic Medium. Okay, so it's Magic Medium. So with the Magic Medium, it's literally, it looks like a, a white glue. And if you get me a sheet of um, copy paper from the machine downstairs, that'd be lovely. Um, so this is the Crafts 2 Magic Medium. And I'm taking an old sort of loyalty card, credit card type thing like that. You could use a palette knife. Um, you know, you could use anything like that, a solid. Um, some people got metal scrapers, so you can use that. So that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of this medium close the bottle so you can see it's just a small amount like that and thank you I'll just pop it away from me and keep that in and that's all I'm going to do I'm just going to spread it out okay and it does dry rather quickly as well okay so I'm just spreading it out And it 
goes on wide and it dries completely clear so you have to wait for that now to go clear and dry down and go matte and that's all I'm going to do is take a cloth and just wipe down the card because then that'll take that off there so it comes off quite easy when it's wet okay so if I put my hand on there it's sticky but we need to wait until that stops being sticky so you can see in that area it's completely dry but we're just going to wait for that to stop being sticky okay and what this does instead of having a black ink um, it's um, it dries clear so it will always take on the color of the card so when I put something through like what we've already done uh, so if I chuck uh, let's have a look if I take the word love with the little bordery parts there that I did on the parchment the waste foil that I took I can actually put that down on there just rubbing it just to make sure there's no real pockets of air underneath there it's sort of taken to it anyway but the one thing I've noticed is if I put that through now this will actually touch the rollers and we don't want that to happen okay so what I do I take a piece of 80 gram thinnest paper you can find so your copy paper I'm going to pop that in as a sandwich I'm going to pop it on the same plates that I used earlier so the 5 mil, the 3 mil clears and the magnetic and I'm going to pop that through and I don't need to use that metal thing because literally I'm just going to fold that over and make sure the plates are in line and I'm going to take that through okay so you just take that through I didn't slow down I didn't do anything it comes out the plates and just to show you that it is like an adhesive whatever was under that paper yeah, it should have used a little less yeah, I should use less paper. Uh, ah, I know what is wrong. So, secret. So, never do that. And I know where I got wrong, and I'll explain that. When you put your foil on, you should cut with the scissors right around to the edge of the foil. That's my first mistake today. Look, see? So that's fine. So, let's show that to you now again. So, on one of these pieces, we'll use the Linda piece with the name. So that's that was my mistake. See, I'm still learning, still doing mistakes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little piece of this adhesive there. I'm going to put that along this little bit of card. And you saw that I did the Linda. First of all with using the pen putting the foil on but because it only sticks because you're putting a bigger piece of foil on it doesn't and it doesn't squidge out through the card but when this paste heats up it actually squidges a bit as well so it squashes it out so that's why you have to be careful with with that so there we are so that's one thing so I'm glad I did that because I can show you what not to do okay I'm doing I'm just waiting for that to dry now okay but I'll while that's drying I'll explain about I'll show you the colour foils so they do um, an emerald green a bright pink
a rose copper which looks a bit like the bright pink but it's more gold it's got more of a goldy towards it I think They do a nice dark sapphire blue, which is lovely. They do a mother of pearl foil. They also do bright silver. They do the gold, which is like the gold you have in the kit, which is the bright gold. They do a ruby red, they do a silver sparkle, and a gold sparkle. Okay, so all together there's 10 different colour foils. Okay, so there we are, 10 different colours. I did, I did it all on purpose so that people could see what not to do. Okay, so now I have the piece that I was doing just now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the Linda piece on there. Okay, and then I'm going to cut around with the foil. So again, this is on 200 grams super smooth. And then because it could still ooze out, I would put the bit of paper in there. Okay. So I'm just going to fold a piece of paper. Put that through, but because there's no bits of the card with that glue on, it's not going to really adhere adhere to it okay so I'm just going to pop that onto there so I'm just sandwiching it that in there I'm going to pop that through the machine so that was nice and quick I put that through the machine so that looks like it's all taken to the card but there is a plastic coating on that foil so if I just rub my finger across the edge I can take that off there and you could hear that it was sticky because all the white bits that's got the word Linda in there is now also got that adhesive in there okay so because that's got the adhesive in there I can do something a little bit special again so what I'm going to do I'm going to pop that to the side a minute I'm going to take one of the other pieces of foil so I'm going to take a bit of red and with the foils um, you've got a little tab that pulls up there just go to the side of this flat bit pull it up and then it'll open two side flaps there and then take that out and what I do I just take the little round sticky thing stick it to my table take a little bit of the foil that I need like so I'm going to pop that over where the Linda part was I'm going to pop it back in my sandwich just to make sure just in case any glue does ooze out again I'm going to pop that in my sandwich again pop it into my plate and that wasn't actually under the heat part so that was fine where it was okay but I always try to take it out but it wasn't actually in my heat area there okay and then what I've done I'm actually taking that foil and you can see now that it's actually put the red foil you see that can you see that so it's actually put the red foil where the white was in the in there and I think if I'm right no 
So that's made the gold look really shiny as well. But I've now got the red bit that's got Linda in there, which I could use again on another piece. So you can just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going <laughs> and just do all sorts of different bits. How much are the foils, Gavin? Do you know? Because I am going to price on my ones. I think Gavin will have a look for you now, Sheila, and let you know. I think they are on the link below, but if you want to keep watching, you, you will lose the video. Um, so that is the red. So with the foils and with the pen, so with the pen you can draw anything you want on anything you want as long as it can take the heat when you put it through okay so you can do any design okay then the magic medium is for taking your waste pieces through or if you want to just cut a piece of foil and do a whole sheet then you can put this over the whole sheet and you can foil the whole sheet and then die cut that sheet out okay with your dies now there is another product as well and that product is called the Kaleido liquid ink okay and there is also um, a blank ink pad obviously this one isn't clear because I've already inked up but I will show you how to do that as well okay so that is the pad and that's all I do with the to reload it is I take the ink I rub the tip of the ink over the top of the pad because it can dry it's a bit like it dries not as quick as stays on as the alcohol inks but it can dry and that's all I do, I take one of the old credit card thingy cards and I spread that ink through the top surface of the, of the sponge. If you use a sponge to move this around then your sponge is going to absorb most of that ink. So if you just use a spreader like this then it means that all the ink you put there is staying there apart from that little bit that you've got left on there. Okay and then that will just come off anyway on your little cloth okay so now I've actually inked up an ink pad so this means I can use it I can use these foils a lot more so what can I use them on well let's take um, a stamp so I've got some butterfly stamps here they're all clear stamps um, and I've just chosen the large butterfly from there. Okay. Um, shall I go for a finer one? Yeah. Yes, I'll go for a finer butterfly because I'll show you how fine the lines will come out then. So put that back in there. Take a finer one. Okay. Put that back into my folder. And I'm going to pop that onto there. So if you've got a press to impress, you can put your pieces of card in there, your stamp in there, and stamp that as usual. But I'm just going to use my acrylic block for now. So again, I'm going to stamp it on all the substrates and all the papers that I've got. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. All the ink is in that pad now. That's all I'm going to do is tap gently onto the stamp, making sure it's fully inked up. Hold it there and lift up. So again with this ink, it is a bit like stays on. So what it can do, it can start to dry and pull up with the paper. So just be aware of that as well. So that's on the 300 gram. 
I won't bother doing the 200 gram because it's just the same paper, it's just a little bit thinner. But the parchment is 150 gram anyway, so you're seeing it on a thinner product anyway. And just pop it down gently and lift that up. So you can now see I've stamped two butterflies. I'm also going to take the film art in paper. Think that up. So once you finish stamping, put your lid back on. And that's that. Okay. But there's something else I want to do as well. So when you've done this, when you finish stamping with it, give your stamp a quick clean and you can see some of the black will stay on there. The archival ink cleaner will actually work on taking that off as well. So we use this archival ink cleaner a lot in our crafting. It's one we found that works on lots and lots and lots of stuff. So all the time this machine is still on, it's still staying at the same temperature as it should do. And so I've just cleaned that stamp and it's nice and clean now. Okay. So don't forget if anybody's got any questions, please do ask. And again, just like using the pen, we have to make sure that the ink is dry. Okay, so that's almost dry. On the parchment paper, it will take a little longer to dry. So we'll put that to the side a minute. And on the backing paper, from Phil Martin, it's almost dry as well. Okay, it's touch dry, but not quite there. So, to do these foils as well, to do these, so you can start take any stamp now and actually foil that stamp with this machine. And like I said, Gavin did try this, put stamp in with this ink, because we just bought this ink and this pad just to try it through a laminating machine but there's not enough pressure and there's not enough heat with a laminating machine this does heat up a lot more okay and when he tried it it did parts of it but it didn't do it all okay it missed out quite a few because the laminator wasn't quite hot enough and not enough pressure so this is why we decided to get the machines in the end because we knew that this would be the best way of doing it okay so what I'm going to do, I've got this butterfly, it's on a blue, a bluey grey, so I think what we'll do, we'll go in with a nice colour. Um, I think we might go in with I might go in with these Shall we go in for the silver? We'll go in for the silver on the blue do we use the blue? Shall I use silver or blue on that, do you think? Is everybody okay? It's all gone quiet. <laughs> so again, we don't need to cut everything if a lot of foil blue yeah i thought blue as well so that's why i cut blue already there we are so that's all i'm going to do i'm going to make sure that is there and take my metal floppy thing put that on the end and then when you put it through you just stop putting it through don't stop just keep going keep going and you just lock it. Okay. <laughs> they are a good machine. Um, I'm going to show you what else it does as well. So, so that is the blue butterfly. 
Now there is a bit of black here showing through so obviously that wasn't dry so because it might have taken some of the black off of there that's all I have to do is I can either go in with a pen and the bits it hasn't done I can go in with a pen just turn it to the light so you can see what it hasn't done and I can leave that to dry and then I can put that bit of foil back on and I can finish that piece so now the blackest on there is actually from the pen which means I can then foil that when that dries <laughs> you okay Emmeline? it's it's a nice it is really really nice I think I'm going to take the glittery silver for the other one and then I'll use um, a pink one on the parchment paper but I want to show you that this machine actually does work like the everyday die cutting machine and um, putting your embossing folders through as well so it isn't just a foiling machine so if somebody is looking for just a die cutting machine that does A5 then obviously this is your it's a good price machine for just that so what I'm going to do I'm just going to leave that to cool down Okay. There we go. So that is lovely and foiled. There we go. Okay, so that's nice and foiled. And again, if you get any little black bits, you can just go with your pen and just touch in those little areas and put the foil back through. Okay. So that is that and then let's put let's put the pink through the parchment as well so when you come to this don't think that you can heat dry this to dry it because if you heat it then it becomes sticky so then it's not dry it is sticky okay so don't try doing that because it's when it gets heated it actually becomes an adhesive okay so that's the whole point of that one so let's use a pink for the parchment let's take that out again uh, wasn't under there so that's fine do remember take those out do take your, pl your plates out parchment put my foil on there put my little metal bendy scribe on and pop that through so bring the plate out so when you're foiling bring the plate out and then you know you're not going to leave it in there And that is then your pink parchment butterfly which I could then go in and white work areas from the back but that is lovely and foily there okay so just to show you that it's not just a foily machine with toners which will show you what else it does so with these machines it actually die cuts as well 
So again, I could foil a piece of card. And I'm going to take a couple of word dies. So when you're cutting, depends whether you like to cut down or whether you like to cut up. If you like to cut down, then put your card on. Put your, put your three mil cutting plate there first. The one with the cutting. Pop that down. Put your card face up and your dies face down which is the way I like to do it because then I can see exactly where I'm putting my dies. Okay. And because there is a bit of magneticness to this, it actually does do that. And this is where your other three mil plate comes into play. Okay. So you've got your magnetic sheet, your three mil that you die cut into. You've also got the three mil that goes on the top and even though the heat is on at the moment it doesn't... Yeah. Sure, no. yeah, but it is the five mil then is it? No, I thought it was the oh, right, there we are. So it is still the same plate so it's a three mil and a five mil on the top sorry. So it's a three mil you're going to cut into and then when you go through you just go through and it is just your everyday die cutting machine okay so it's just your die cutting machine All your words come out. Let's see if you get a porky tool. I'll be back now. Just let me get my porky tool. I forgot the porky tool. My tweezers. Sorry about that. I know you got my back. I knew I'd forget something. So yeah, so I'm just going to... Tweezers has got a very fine point. So you got my back, but there then. And then your words will just come out. So it's just a standard die cutting machine that heats up and foils as well. That's just to show you that's the one word, so that's best. And these are really, really fine dies. If any of you have ever bought one of Phil Martin's sentiment dies, they're really, really fine dies. Really, really fine. And these dies actually come with a nesting part as well. So not just the word in, it's the nesting as well. There we are. I won't take the other one out, I'll just leave that in there for now. But the other one was wishes, but they've all cut lovely. So you can see that it is your normal. So if I lift that up so you can see that a bit closer. So you can see they're really, really fine sentiments. Okay. They are really, really, really fine. Okay. So that's die cut in. So always leave your one plate for your die cut in. You can even turn them over as well. So what machine would I sort of put this in same sort of line with? Probably a big shot, I would think. I would put it with a big shot because you can because it's got the thick base plate the magnetic plate you can actually it means that you can actually put the bigs dies through you and the b i g z dies which are thick ones 
uh, from Tim Holtz and, and other people. So they are, they can go through this machine as well. So, so you're not limited to just the thin dies. You can put all the other dies through your, you're just using a different sandwich. Okay, so that's the paper there. So another thing I wanted to show you was um, taking a brush and just be careful when you're doing this. Okay, I'm just going to take a piece of the 200 gram here. Open your ink, okay, which is the one you use to do your foils, to do your, your ink pad. And if you want to distress the edges with brush marks, you could even do, if you've got a brush, you know, you can do right in with it as well so if you've got a special brush you can go in you can paint different areas within a yeah you know, just go in and paint little areas do little brush strokes coming in from the side so if you want to distress it if you wanted to put grass down the side of the at the bottom of the page you know you can use then the brush with your ink to do a different design as well okay so I will leave so I'm going to pop that into a bucket of water so that it doesn't dry my brush up okay I'm gonna leave that to dry a bit and I'm going to show you something with a stencil So I've got a stencil and I'm just going to take a 300 piece of card. So again you can do this on your parchments, you can do it on all the other things you can. Um, one thing I haven't tried yet is actually putting a stencil with this ink onto maybe a wooden frame and then leaving it to dry and then put in sort of your foil on it with a piece of paper over the top and then ironing over the top to see if that would actually work so that could be something I might try in in the future as well and we will post about that if we do so what we're going to think of it's pressure and heat that's fixing this to the actual with the adhesive okay so that is one thing we've got to think of. So I'm now going to take a fingered over. Don't go into my ink pad. And this is the ink pad that I've just inked up. I'm just going to do a little bit there just to show you. Okay, and then because of that, that needs to go into, you can spray with water and clean it, or you can just pop it into um, a bucket of water, or a bowl of water, and that'll actually stop it from drying off then on there. But now I've put that through a stencil, actually got toner on there now, as well. So while that is drying there's a couple of things that I want to talk to you about oh, and I also want to show that you can put an embossing folder through there as well so just a standard 3d embossing folder okay 3d embossing folder piece of card and the thing with this is I think is to just whatever your embossing folder is just have a look which one will actually go through okay so this is a 3d embossing folder 
and I have actually used the 5mm clear plate so just one 5mm clear plate and the base plate okay and that now has embossed so it works exactly like your um, works exactly like your normal die cutting machines it'll die cut you can put your embossing folders through um, you know you can you can do all that sort of stuff okay so all your standard stuff you can do through this machine you're just governed by it's a5 okay it's a5 in size so that's that's your sort of thing okay but yeah it is a really good impression it's really smooth actually as well because sometimes I find that they curve too much but this has got a really good impression and it's sturdy it's flat as well it's not curving at all and that's on a 200 gram card that is as well so so that's that's pretty good okay so this is still drying from this through the stencil so let me show you something else I want I have actually got a foil press machine and the foil press machine uses different foils so the foil press machine uses foils that fix with heat not with an adhesive that becomes sticky when it's heated but it actually fixes with pressure and heat so no adhesives it's just a foil that fixes with heat so completely different to a toner foil so all the Kaleido foils are toner foils okay because this is a toner ink that is a that is a toner pen and that is a magic medium paste that becomes an adhesive when it's heated okay so the Gemini foil press dies fix with heat and pressure okay so if you had just a piece of card that you want to foil in and you happen to have some heat fix foils I've got my scissors okay obviously I'm just using smaller sheets you can use a bigger sheet and put a bigger piece of foil on okay so that is there okay and that's a Gemini foil press foil so uh, toddle foils any foils that you know you can use plates with that actually use pressure an impression with the foils they can be used like this okay and then that's all I'm going to do I'm going to take just to make sure that nothing lifts up I'm just going to take a little bit of paper just to make sure and this is just for me safeguarding the top roller on there so that nothing actually touches it that can damage it okay so I've got a three mil a five mil clear plate the magnetic my piece of card and a foil press foil okay and then a piece of paper on the top just so that I can make sure that stays pretty flat okay and then when I do that and I lift that up no. Oh. yeah it's still on oh. right okay so what it is it needs to be direct to the roller because it's a heat press foil it needs to be direct on the roller that's why so I'm just gonna put my my little metal scribe in yeah that's better okay so don't put a piece of paper in just put your foil on can tape it if you want to the top of your paper okay that will go on there 
and then what you do you just take the sheet off your sheet has completely taken all the foil off and you're just left with a nice foiled piece of paper and then I could take my dies it could be a really intricate die and I can cut straight through that then okay and that foil is adhered to it it's not going to come off it was not going to scratch it's absolutely perfect so that's lovely okay so that is using the German Isle foil press foils because that is a heat press foil so that is the difference okay but now we can go back to we can go back to this piece now okay and so this is a toner ink that I've used so I now need to use a toner foil okay so I'm going to use this piece in fact shall we use a couple of different ones yeah let's use a couple of different ones what's that in fact let's cut a couple I'm going to use the red and I'm also going to use some pink as well so I'm going to take a piece of red that I'm going to cut a little bit off I'm going to put that there I'm going to bring it up so it just goes over the edge of the paper and I'm going to use one of the pinks so if anybody has come on and haven't said hello yet Please say hello and I can say hello back. Just in case I've missed you. If I have missed you, I'm sorry. And hello. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my two pieces of foil on there, taking my little mag my little strip. Yeah, I think I have got the rose gold. Yep, nope, I picked up the I picked up the bright pink, sorry. Right, there we are so I've now held them there so it's now going to do two colors okay and this was put in the toner through um, my stencil Just bring it out the other side take that off you can see then you can you can do more than two colour foils on on there as well. Okay, so I'm just wiggling it there so you can see the line through the one heart here that shows where the foil is. And that's a lovely, lovely colour that is. Okay, so you can... That's okay, Tina. So this is all being foiled even the finest areas where I hardly touched the paper has actually foiled. And you can see the tiny, tiny little dots. Let's see if I can bring that up to the camera to show you. So on this little corner here, it's just very, very fine dots on this little bit here. It's amazing. It's just like a little fingerprint. You can just see it there. It's, it's brilliant just really really nice now so that is basically your basics of your foil machine there is something else I have worked out um, it would void if you did this it would pro it would void your um, Help me out, Gav, what's the word? It would void your... I can't think of the word. My word is gone. No. Can't 
can't think of the word. Warranty, and that's the one. It would void your warranty because you're using it in a way it shouldn't be used, okay? But I had to try it. I just had to try it because that's the way I am, okay? So, thank you. Thank you, Shira. <laughs> yes, warranty is definitely the one. Um, so, what I did, I actually put um, a 3mm plate on the base. I took two pieces of grey cardboard and two pieces of, I think it was 200 gram card, which makes it thinner than other things. And then I've taken a foil press die. Okay. Now the heat is still on this machine. That is now stuck to that with a magnetic. And what you've got to do, when you push it into the machine, the die has got to be just touching, literally just, just, just touching. Okay. So it needs an extra shim in there. So each die would be slightly different. I'm just going to try that again. So it's not quite touching again. Okay, so you just put another one in. Like I think that is almost touching now. In fact, I think it might be done. Because and I, the reason I'm saying this is because if you put your two or three mil plates in, oh, there you go. But put your two or three mil plates in and put your grey board in. The two or three mil plates, two pieces of cardboard, your thingy plate. So basically, what you want is for this die to literally just, just be skirting the rollers, okay? So, yeah, bit thin that. Let's take out the cardboard and let's have a look. Yeah. So that's it. So you just have to play around. You get your sandwich so that this plate is literally just rubbing like that. It's going through. I can feel there's something there against the roller but it's not turning my handle at all so it's not actually going to damage the roller at all okay but that is your core so this is a foil press die which actually works with a foil press foil okay so remember this is something you would have to choose whether to do or not because it, this isn't the way this machine is supposed to work okay let's cut this foil okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to put a piece of the 300 gram card on top of my going to put the foil, got to think which way it is now, shiny side down, okay, my card on the top and then I'm going to pop that through the machine. So this is using your So if it doesn't go, it needs another bit of card. But that's proven now that we're making sure that it's not too much up against the roller. No, 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 no. Don't have to. no. So foil, shiny side down, card on the top. So this is putting pressure onto the back of that die now. Okay, and once that's gone through, let's have a look. Okay, so 
paint. Right, so you can see that worked a little bit, but not quite enough. So this is why I'm saying it is down to you to make sure that your sandwich is correct. Okay. But this is, and I had to try it. I could not try it. Right, there you go. So that's happened now. So I put my foil through, I put my plate through. It was just about going through. And then when I peel that off, it actually does your happy birthday. Foil through that. Okay. And that is what I've done with another plate. I just did all the dots, but you can get that through. Okay. I'm sure she would, Linda. So basically, um, keep your your Kaleido foils are for toners. So you can put it through with a photocopy from a, a, a laser machine and you can put it through this and they would fix it. Um, you can use it with the Kaleido liquid ink on an ink pad. You can use the pen, the liquid pen, and you can also use the magic medium. Okay, so that is all the things that you can use. Obviously, the liquid ink, the medium, and the pad is something extra, but you will get one of the foils and one of the pens with everything over the on machine. Okay. Yeah, so so the reason I say be careful with pushing putting that under so that this one just touches the roller is so that it's not cutting into the roller. Not that this is a cutting die, but you don't want to damage your top roller because that is the heating roller. So if even if you just want to use it with the toners, your inks and your pens and uses a normal die cutting machine and uh, putting your embossing folders through it is a lovely machine to use and it's sturdy it doesn't wobble anyway the table wobbles more than the machine so yeah so i hope that you enjoy that um i said all the samples i've done i will actually take some of them into oh i forgot to do that i actually forgot to do a bit so this was the sorry this was the this was the foil for this was where I used the brush oh look I've almost forgot about that bit this is a bit I used the brush on so I'm going to put that through now five or three are clear. I'm going to put the metal strip through as well just to hold that on there just to show you that Yeah, so when I took my brush and brushed that along the side of the card, I should take that off. You can see you can get all the brush marks going across the bottom of your card there. Okay, so that, and it's actually done the bit that was missing from the blue earlier when I put the pen on it as well. Okay, so that is actually all finished now, and that is all done. So thank you again for watching. Um, yeah, watch it later, Tina. All the video will be on YouTube and you will be able to see it from our Facebook again. Uh, so if you want little hints and tips again, just do that. If I find anything else I can do with this machine uh, without going outside of the limits of it, um, I will actually post another video um, about that. But for now, 
enjoy your machine as it is, have a play. If you bought the machine with us, then you know, post a video on what you've done or post a photo of it on Valley Crafters because you can join our Valley Crafters if you bought something from us recently. And we can go from there, okay? So thank you very much everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a mess around you now because that's how I like to play. But um, yeah, glad you enjoyed. Thank you very much and see you again soon. Bye. Bye everyone. Hope you're all okay. Bye again. Glad you enjoy it.